and welcome to another episode of JP and the Beans Talk. Ho! Oh. Took me a second to think of what I was going to say, but we're back. Good start. Good yes, start. Yes, thank you. Yeah. How's yeah. Florida? Real quick. Uh, warmer than here. <laughs> it was great. Yeah. So much sand. Um, I will not be more cohesively tan for years. <laughs> for years. Like, I always get fantastic and by fantastic, I mean hideous farmer's tans. Like my yeah. forearms, whew, they're sharp. And the rest of me, no, that's not a, so great. That's uh, how not you know so you're great. Midwestern right 100%, there. 100%. Farm, 100%. Farmer tan. Midwestern and of a certain age or certain stage of life. <laughs> and I am bronzed all over. And it's the first time that's been the case in years. And the last time it'll be for years. Well, there you so go. I'm just You earned it. I'm just, yeah, I'm enjoying that little slice of vanity while I can. And trying to settle back into the Midwest where it's the end of May and the high tomorrow is like 50 degrees. It's yeah, like, I don't, what the balls I don't is understand this? why that this even is. happened. Like, it, we had a, well, the week before when you guys were gone, yep. it rained the entire week here. I don't know if you knew that or not. I did. But it thunderstormed the entire week. Imagine and it's just my a delight at not being yeah, here. Exactly. I was thrilled. And then yesterday was amazing. Oh. And yeah. then now we're going, and then we're just going downhill again. Yeah, yeah, I don't get it. So, but you know what? Can't control the weather. You can only control oh, absolutely not. what you do with it. And we're going to make the best of it. So it's great. I'm just glad that I'm no longer playing or coaching or officiating high school baseball oh, that's in the state of good. Iowa because this is when the first week of games is taking place yep. in this crap, in rain, cold, nonsense. This is your first year not doing it? Or second? Uh, second year, yeah. Since moving to Ames, so it's been just two years. Yeah. Jeez, it feels like yeah. you've been in Ames for longer than that. I know. I know. Crazy. It really does. But, no, it's all good. I got to read a lot of great comics on vacation. Exactly. Um, so that was fantastic. Took advantage of that time while on the beach. I got to say, it was pretty fantastic. That's the way to do it, man. Yeah. That's the way to do yeah, it. Yeah, I recommend it. Highly recommend. Highly recommend. Yeah, it looks like you went through a lot of reading, Woo! too. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna we're not gonna get through like all of this, but I've decided this is a new thing. I should just like we should just display if we have comics we're talking about, we should just put we, them up here. You know what? Let I, them be seen. I love that idea. Yeah, we're gonna do that now. Right from little, now on. Little visual inspiration. Yes. I mean, I might piece through some of these. I mean, and even here. show off the beautiful artwork on the front there. That artwork, whoo, it's insane. Like I brought it just to look at it. Like we're not even gonna talk a lot about death metal today. No, but it looks so cool. Yeah. It looks so cool. We need to get some of the, the like, the, it would be cool to get some of the comics that line up, you know, that are like yeah. three-piece ones, you yeah. know? Yeah. Oh, well, there is no doubt. There is no doubt. So, yeah, I we'll got get through. There. Let's see. I read through Mr. Miracle by Tom King. That's fantastic. Read through Dark Knight's Metal. Uh, read through Death Metal. I think that was I think that was it. But a lot of good meat on that bone oh, yeah. to chew through. It was fantastic. It was glorious. Well, let's get right into it today, because we're yeah for our past series. It's uh we're going Invincible Iron Man. You bet, Invincible Iron Man. So right off the bat, Matt Fraction, okay, is the author, and then a dude named Salvador La Roca or La Rocha. I'm gonna say La Rocha. It's gotta be La Rocha. We're gonna go with that. I have no idea. Boom. <laughs> I was there gonna say La Roca because there's no H, but you never know. I feel like if your first name is Salvador. The, the rest of your name can be whatever. Well, you, you gotta. Want to I think you gotta roll the R's. Yeah. La Roca. La Roca. La Roca. I can't La Roca. roll the R's. Okay. okay, I like that. La Roca. La Roca. <laughs> Anywho, this is a fantastic <laughs> series. Um, comes hot on the heels of the conclusion of Civil War, where Captain America is essentially beaten by Iron Man. You could also say he concedes the fight, which would be mm -hmm. true. Point is, Iron Man and his side are victorious. They push forth the Registration Act, meaning that anybody that wants to continue to be active as a superhero has to actually register their previously, perhaps, secret identity with S.H.I.E.L.D. and the U.S. government. Conveniently enough, Mr. Stark slides into the role that has been created by the absence of Nick Fury to become the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I forgot he had that yeah. for a while. Yeah, so he was really, uh, he, he's he's doubling down. Like, one of the, one of the great mysteries, we're not going to make this political, but we are for a second. One of the great mysteries is, who is profiting from the COVID shenanigans, all right? Who's profiting from Civil War? Freaking Iron Man. Freaking oh, yeah. Tony Stark is profiting from Civil War because his brand is getting just burnished by being the head of S.H.I.E.L.D. and... I'm sorry, who makes all the weapons for S.H.I.E.L.D.? Stark Industries. Oh, yeah, yeah. So 
Not a bad relationship there. <laughs> a little all. real world to fictional world parallel. So that's where we find Mr. Stark at the outset of this story. And things are good, in other words, right? Everything looks as secure as it can be until a dude with the last name of Stain Obadiah. comes in the picture. Psych, though. Not Obadiah. Obadiah's son. Oh. Better still. Obadiah Jr. Right? Freaking Ezekiel Stain. Okay, what, that's way better a, than o- Obadiah what Jr. What a great... Like, how about two for two on the bad guy names? Like, Obadiah Stain... Dude has to be bad. They're like the old school, like, western yes. bad guy names. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. It's like the corrupt marshal back in the old in the old western days that has to be dealt with. Freaking old, Obadiah. Old Obadiah. <laughs> and then and his, Zeke. And his little boy, Zeke. And so the story follows Ezekiel Stane's efforts to take down Tony Stark in Iron Man. And so the title of this particular collection of stories is The Five Nightmares. And essentially it's Tony Stark as he narrates his way through the story explaining what he fears the most. And hence five things or five nightmares. And the primary fear or nightmare that Tony Stark has is that someone is going to essentially outdo him and his Iron Man technology and armor and make it obsolete. Lo and behold... Here comes Ezekiel Stain, and I'm sorry, Ezekiel Stain, who needs a suit? He just turns himself into an Iron Man suit. Like, he finds a way to biologically unlock, untap genetic potential to where he can just literally shoot beams of energy out of his fingertips. So kind of like Extremis, then? Similar. Right. Similar idea to Extremis. Exactly. Exactly. And so he becomes, obviously, a very potent adversary to mm-hmm. Tony Stark. Of course. Just in the mono e mano sense. Like, he's gotten a firepower to take down Tony Stark. But on top of this, he's not just trying to kill Tony Stark. He's trying to entirely dismantle Stark Industries. So he's creating these human bombs. This is something similar to what we saw in the Iron Man 3 film. Okay. Okay. Where you have these biological weapons that are just walking into pick your place in this case, Stark Industry Buildings, Mm -hmm. and detonating, killing thousands of people, ruining Stark Industries. And so Tony's competing against his equal scene, trying to stay ahead of him in order to keep his company afloat, to try and keep S.H.I.E.L.D. afloat, and really just try and keep himself on this pedestal that he's found himself on since the conclusion of Civil War. Um, And what's really fascinating about the story is that Tony in a really bizarre twist, is forced to sacrifice Stark Industries. Like, he essentially detonates a massive EMP that depowers Ezekiel Stain, but also completely neuters his company. And so it depowers, like, everything. All Mm -hmm. of his production is just gone. It's out. And then he and Ezekiel Stain have a good old fisticuffs at oh, the like end. without the armor? With essentially without the armor. Yep. They Does just get Iron after Man know it. Kung Fu at this point? He knows enough. He, he knows he, enough. He knows enough to, to take care of himself. And so obviously, as as you'd expect, Iron Man is victorious. He defeats Ezekiel Stain, but at humongous cost yep. to himself because he hasn't done it without a ton of lives being lost. Uh Ezekiel Stain has made his mark, right? It makes me think of that, gosh, what's that quote from Iron Man 2 where uh, Mickey Rourke's character with the freaking whip whips. Lash, whiplash. Baby. There it is. Right whiplash. <laughs> Bring out the pop. Let's see it. There you go. Whiplash there you go. right there. One of my favorite scenes in Iron Man 2. It's a great scene. The suitcase armor, and, baby. That's right. In Remember, shortly after that scene, in prison, he's telling Tony Stark that if you can make God bleed, there'll be blood in the water and the sharks will come. And so... This run by Matt Fraction, all right, so those of you just listening, you can't see this stack, but it unleashes this huge sequence of stories where Tony Stark goes from being on top of, you know, the world as much as he can be to slowly seeing all that security, all that he has accomplished, just really eroding beneath him. And frankly, in spite of his best efforts. So it's not like Tony is getting some comeuppance here for things that he's done wrong or done badly, but it also transitions into the the dark reign, 
right? Okay, yeah, Shortly yeah. after after this particular set of stories, to where Osborne is coming after Tony Stark because Tony Stark later on in this particular series essentially downloads the superhuman registration database into his brain. And, then, and Norman does this to his it, brain? No, this is what Tony Stark does oh, to his brain. Okay. And so when Norman Osborn takes over S.H.I.E.L.D., he can't get the superhuman registration database because Tony Stark has destroyed it except for the copy in his brain. And Clutch further, move. Clutch move, though. That is clutch. Here's what else is nuts. Here's, here's where it gets really wild, right? Tony Stark recognizes, okay, but if Norman Osborn ever catches me, kills me, digs up my buried body and takes out my brain, he could access that information. He goes on this quest to literally erase his mind before Norman Osborn catches him. So you have this so He's genius. that terrified that Norman's going to kill him. He wow. is. Not, not even just kill him, but just like take that information and use it in a hostile fashion, right? And mm-hmm. so Tony goes from being top of the authority, top of the wealth, top of the technology to step-by-step, step, he, he's just beaten. But again, it's not... I would argue this is a much more enjoyable Tony Stark to read than what you see in Civil War, where it's kind of hard to root for him. It's like... Oh, he's such a douchebag. Yeah, it's like, Tony, you're being a dick, well, man. That's... You are being a dick. And this is, this is Tony... For as much as his like material wealth and everything that has made him so unique starts to disintegrate, this makes his character a lot more worthwhile, a lot more engaging. Because he's literally he's literally making himself dumber as he goes on this quest. Yeah. Like he is erasing parts of his mind, and so it's fascinating because it becomes harder and harder for him to actually operate his Iron Man suits because he doesn't have the mental capacity to do so at a high level. So he makes it harder on himself to get away from Norman Osborn. He shoots he himself can't... in the foot. Yeah, and, but you also get it because you're like, well, you're not wrong. Like, Norman Osborn wants that oh, yeah. for the you know for the wrong reasons, and so he's going to do nasty things with it. So it, it's a really fascinating arc for Tony. Um, Pepper has some great, great stuff in here. This is where she kind of starts becoming the character of, uh, or the alter ego of Rescue. Oh, yeah, yep. So that's fantastic. So a lot of great stuff. I would highly recommend if you're looking for something that you haven't read before, um, but it's a character that you're at least familiar enough with where you feel like, hey, I can just pick this up and go. This is a great comic for that. Like, you don't need a lot of context behind it. You can just dive into this puppy. And our boy Salvador, like the art in here, Oh, it's, it's fantastic. It's though. really, really solid. That's why I want to flip through it a little yes, bit. Yes, yeah. it's, it's fantastic. And I think Salvador and Fraction stick together for, yeah, this entire run through the Invincible nice. Iron Man. So very, very cool. And that's, that doesn't always happen, right? No. Nope. We have an author and an artist that, that have that kind of uh, synergy where they stick with each other for that many issues, but it really benefits the story quite a bit. So super, super story. Good Sweet, stuff. yeah, yeah, because he was a he was a super douche in Civil War. Oh, because but I was listening to somebody the other day, and I can't remember if it was on YouTube or what, but they said you know those head to head like superhero where it's you know Captain America, Iron Man, or yeah. Superman, Batman. Those are yep. so hard to do because you have to make one the bad guy. Mm. Sure, but I think like in sure. the Civil War movie, they did a really good job. Compared to uh, compared to okay, I understand where Tony's coming from. I yep. understand where, where Captain America's coming from. Yeah, but like in this book, you're like, no, Iron Man's totally wrong. Like Correct. you can't get behind him at all. Yeah, in that one. Yeah, right. If you're talking to somebody about that comic and they're like, well, yeah, I side with Iron Man. That's a deal breaker. That relationship is over if there was one to begin with. Um, or you've just you know. And hopefully identified someone that you can't trust. I mean Spider I mean Spider Man's arc throughout that entire oh. one is like tells it all. Like mm-hmm. he thought he was on the right side, realized mm-hmm. he made a mistake and switched. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. uh cause I'm trying to think, because Thor wasn't there at the time too. Do you, have you ever Clone Thor. have you That's ever seen up. uh like the panels for when Tony and him meet up for the first time afterwards? Like new Asgards on Earth. Because he had to do something to save it. Yep. But it's it's fantastic. You should look that up. Because 
Thor is livid that Tony cloned him without his permission. Like, he didn't even ask. in here, Riles. And then, is it in there? I'm gonna look. Dude, because then, uh, he, I think Tony said that was the real Thor. Didn't he play him off like he was the real Thor? The yes, clone? Yes, they were not, for, he and Reed Richards were not forthright about how, uh, not the real Thor. Which, yeah. Mistake. So, basically, That's a mistake. Thor beats the living shit out of Tony. Like, it's not even close. He's like, do that again and you die, pretty much. Mm. But that fight is incredible because it shows off how strong Thor is. I fall more and more in love with Thor as the years go on, I realize. Oh, no doubt. Like, he's starting to no crack, doubt. like, my top ten. And he'll probably eventually get to at least the top seven, but... Yeah, yeah. That, with, that's... Chris, with Chris Hemsworth... <laughs> Yeah, and, and the comics run that he's had. Like, oh my gosh, that's lately? A, that's a character, exactly. That's a character that, while he's always been there, has not, as far as I know at least, historically had great comic runs. Like, they've always been, I would say, surface level, mm-hmm. right? Where you go, yeah, if you want to read something that's pretty, pretty lighthearted and easy to get into, you know, easy to get out of, yeah, read a little Thor, and uh, and you'll be fine. But you're not gonna yeah. come away going, man. That was one of the best best stories I've ever read. But you're absolutely right. What they're doing with his, or what they have done with his character has been fantastic. Well, and the thing is too with Thor that I wish the movies would have done justice yep. is the Norse mythos mm-hmm. because they really go in depth with that in the comics, yep. and like they just. Even Thor 1 and Thor 2, it's like, it's like they haven't hit the mark of the Norse mythology. Yeah. Because essentially, and I know this might be a long shot a little bit, but if they would have done Thor right from the beginning, it could have been your Lord of the Rings for mm-hmm. the MCU mm-hmm. in the sense that there's seven different realms to go through and right. builds on like trolls and elves and yeah, all I this mean, other stuff. So They really just like gently introduced us to Jotunheim and... Then let's see, Niflheim is the dark elves, and, and that was about it. And they're absolutely right. Like there is a there's a rich, rich tapestry oh, yeah. that we didn't we didn't get. And they the didn't MCU. really explore it that no. much. They could have, no. but they didn't really touch it. Like we could have gotten so many more fight scenes with just frost giants in general. Mm-hmm. But again, it's been a long time since I seen the first Thor movie too, so maybe I'm not remembering it fully. But no, you're not you're not wrong though. Um, there's there's some missed missed opportunity and. Sure, maybe they'll maybe they'll kind of back their way into that. Maybe. So never say never, because you're absolutely right. There's still a lot of a lot of great a lot of great opportunity there. But I think I think in this next movie, it's just going to be more cosmic mm-hmm. than yeah, like uh, Norse. I think we're going to see Beta Ray Bill for the first time. Sure, that's my guess. Sure. But I'd be on board with that. I'd be on board with that. One more plug I'm going to give to my yeah, guy Matt, absolutely. Matt Fraction here to kind of bring it back to the Iron Man. So Mr. Fraction also wrote the uh, the Hawkeye uh, comic book series. Oh, is that the one you showed me too? Yep, with uh, Hawkeye and Kate Bishop. And I picked that one up as well, gave that a read. And really, like, really well done. I wouldn't say that I came away from it going, man, that's one of my favorite comics I've ever read. Yeah. But it was it was worthwhile. Like it was clever. The artistic style was really unique, um, and I can't. I I know I've never read anything with Kate Bishop in it. Oh yeah. Um, but she was a she was a great character. Uh, so I, I would recommend if you like if you read this, you like what Matt Fraction does with Iron Man. Definitely check out that run on Hawkeye. Good stuff in there as well, and, and especially when you consider like Hawkeye is not a not a solo character. Right mm-hmm. for for comics, yep. he's always in a supporting role. Um, pretty impressive, you could pull that off. So, and we're about to get a lot more Kate Bishop content soon too with Truth. the new Hawkeye series. Truth. And I, yep. I think uh, there's been a lot of talks for Young Avengers going to be a movie here soon. There's so much untapped potential. Oh yeah, yeah. So, so much. Yeah, Kate Bishop's kind of becoming a. I think she's going to take a bigger role here soon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I will say this: like the character of Iron Man. I like what Matt Fraction does with it in these comics. Um, I I would heart I would liken the Iron Man character in some ways as similar to Thor in the comics, where he just doesn't have a lot of for as well known as the character is now with the MCU yeah. movies, he doesn't have 
a lot of runs in the comics where you're going, oh, that was worth reading. That was worth reading. This is, I think, really it. Like, if you're going to read any Iron Man, you read Matt Fraction's Iron Man. Like, that is where it's it's dang good. It's worthwhile. Like, it's Iron Man's character is great in the context of the Avengers. Mm-hmm. Like, when Brian Michael Bendis was writing the new Avengers uh, after Avengers Disassembled, we got to talk about that sometime. We will. Um, oh, we, we will. But this is, like... This as a solo Iron Man Enterprise is fantastic. So it's really, really good. And I think anytime you've got a good hero that's up against a really worthwhile villain, or in this case, like villains, Ezekiel Stane, Norman Osborn, let's go. That's great. I, I mean, I think the problem with Iron Man, why there might be like that lack of like flair, mm-hmm. per se, mm-hmm. is just the fact that what do you do with them? In a sense, because yeah. a lot of the storylines is like, okay, somebody either got my armor, is outdoing me in armor, or try and take, you know, basically yeah. take my weapons and stuff. Yeah. Or, you know. That's a good point. He's almost he's almost too powerful, right? Because, like, with Thor, you just throw him out into space, out in the galaxy. It's like, there we go. We can find we can find somebody that can give Thor a run for his money. Well, that and but Iron got- Man, it's like, well, he's got to stay on Earth, really, to be relevant crap <laughs> well yeah because what, what do you do now who, who can compete with the guy yeah thor's got seven realms he yep. goes cosmic yeah right now he's with galactus yeah and then yeah with iron man it's like okay where can i make my next cool armor right what else right. can i do oh i can I'll make, make a it ninja gray suit. oh i'll make it a different color <laughs> here, that's, <laughs> that's it <laughs> here's a thor buster you know in case thor goes bad yeah yeah, yeah. So. but i mean that's yeah it, it'll be interesting. Yeah, and like Iron Man kind of gets pegged as Marvel's Batman, right? Like in a way, rich, yeah, yeah. right? In not a direct comparison, but it's a little tricky because Iron Man, his, his niche is never niche is never. Uh, hey, he he's he's not the detective that yeah. Batman is, right? It's more of his inventive. He's a quality. tech guru. He's a tech guru, and so I think that's where. That's where the challenge lies is a lot of the villains that have been put in Iron Man's realm aren't really that techy. Like the oh my gosh, the who Mandarin. Like the Mandarin is he's a magic dude. But badass though. Sure. Sure. But it's just it's like a hard it's a hard blend. It's like who do you who do you put up against Iron Man? So Ezekiel Stane, good choice. Well it's either good choice. It's either an exact mirror. Yeah, and the fact where it's like, it's like Justin Hammer, or or yeah, right, or Obadiah Stane, right, and then you have the other ones where it's like, okay, here's a guy named Hurricane, we'll throw him at him, and then uh, and then we have the Mandarin who's got weird wizard rings, and then we'll have a floaty guy in Modok where he just shoot. That one actually is pretty good matchup. You, you know who would be a good matchup, Magneto. <laughs> yeah, right. All I had to do is crush him, though. Right. Right, there's a good adversary. Let's let's see Iron Man take down Magneto. Makes an armor out of plastic. And now we've got plastic. some respect. That would be incredible. <laughs> it's all made of reused, oh. recycled shopping bags. <laughs> single use. Single use. Sing- single use. <laughs> single use. So there you go. That that's the recommendation. Invincible Iron Man. Matt Fraction. Start with the five nightmares. You uh, you will not be disappointed. There is a feast awaiting the person that uh, that dives in there. And last thing I'll say about it too is I feel like it flows really well through Civil War, Secret Invasion, and then Dark Reign without you as the reader. Like if this is all you're reading and you're not reading those Avengers events, you're going to be just fine. Like you're going to be okay. There's brief snippets in here that explain, hey, so here's what's happened <laughs> between now and then. So you're not lost. Um, I, I really appreciate that about the story. It's really solid, really well uh, really self-contained so which is good because sometimes those comics you know they'll have those tie-ins where you have to read the tie-ins or perfect you know. perfect segue all right perfect segue perfect. to get into our current didn't even do that on purpose. topic incredible stuff all right dark knight's metal now it's been a few years i want to say it was 2017 the dark knight's yep. metal originally came out okay so as i stated earlier in the podcast went to florida read some great comics one of which I took with me that I had read multiple times before was Dark Knight's Metal, but it's been it's been a year, okay? 
since I've read Dark Knight's Metal and just just That's look a at that. Badass, yeah. What is going on? One That's of my favorite fan- covers. That That's fantastic. Okay, I had forgotten in the year that it had been since I'd read this book how dependent this story is on all these tie-ins. I'd forgotten it. So this is this is all I took with me to Florida. Right? Oh, and then you're like, and I'm uh, reading it. And I, I've read the story, so I know what has happened, right? So I'm not lost, but I'm frustrated. And this is just going to be me going on this little little pedestal here, and then I'll get off of it. I really hate how comics, when they are produced in graphic novel form, yep. are so broken up. And like, I get it from the individual issue perspective of, well, you've got the main story thread and then you've got this author doing you know making his contribution this author making his contribution in different story threads and they're all tying together i get that that's the nature of the event but when you're gonna freaking print like the actual graphic novel version i don't understand why it's so broken up to where you literally like if you want to read this story and get through it and mind you it's worth it but you've got to have you gotta have three or four books next to you at the same time you're going okay here bookmark next bookmark next yeah that just makes for clumsy uh a clumsy experience again worth it yeah with this bad boy because my goodness is it rewarding for that effort but i really wish that comics would get away from that i i just i had that issue it's unfortunate i had that issue with spider verse because i Mm -hmm. bought it i'm like sweet and then it'd be like oh well this happened in issue number two of web work and i'm like that's not in here no so it's just no. this. So this one's just the main storyline, then. Right. And then right. the other tie-ins, I'm assuming, are the other two, and then I'm assuming one of them is the origins, right? Yeah. For so each hero. I'll, I'll, for as much as I'm They're complaining, villain. like I'll give them, I'll give the, I'll give the publishers some credit. Like they do put all the material out there, so you can get it, and it's enjoyable to go through. And one of the unique things they do is they published this book called Dark Days, The Forge, okay, The Road to Metal. And in it, there's a there's about a two to three issue like original story that directly leads into the metal story. But then they also compile the stories from the last I don't know, handful of years that have helped influence where Dark Knight's metal wants to go. So pretty cool. In other words, stories that weren't written by Scott Snyder and drawn by Greg Capullo, but that are relevant to where the Dark Knight's metal story is going to go. Gotcha. Let me just, little little friendly tip as well, don't ever read Final Crisis by Grant Morrison. Don't ever try and read that crap. That's where Batman gets sent back in time by Dark Side. <laughs> time, time bullets. Time bullets. Throwback. Literally time bullets. <laughs> this time it's DC, not Marvel. So there you go. Congrats, <laughs> you morons. You all used it. It is the most confusing and least rewarding comic I have ever read. Like, really? Grant Morrison has written some great stuff. Yeah. Awesome stuff. Like classic Justice League stuff that I own, that I love. All-Star Superman, that's awesome. The only thing that you need to know about Final Crisis is Batman gets sent back in time, finds his way back, and that's what leads us into metal. So here's the sweet premise of this story, right? Batman has this sense, has this hunch as a detective that he is being used in a way that he is not aware. So in other words, somebody is manipulating him from behind the scenes. What he comes to find out as he digs through this mystery is that there is this cosmic creature called Barbados. Badass, by the way. Great name. Another We're hey, crushing I'm, the names. Is another old name? Western. Barbados, you bet. Oh. You bet. Barbados. He's killed like 15 <laughs> people. <laughs> He's, Best six gun shooter in the he's West. A problem. He's a problem. Barbados. This Barbados creature, when Batman was sent back in time, saw Batman go back in time and recognized that Batman was not from the past, was from the future, and therefore he could use Batman to bring himself, this is Barbados we're talking about, to bring himself out of this new creation to us, the reader, called the Dark Multiverse. What the flip is the dark multiverse, you ask? Okay, so DC has the multiverse, 52 universes, all right, in the known world. What we find out in this story is, snap, there's a dark multiverse. 
So there's literally a scene where they're looking at the map, right? Just a flat, laid out cloth, paper, whatever map. And they're going, excuse me, there's what? And the character flips it over and goes right underneath here. Dark multiverse. It's essentially the nightmare verse. So you have a nightmare. Batman has a nightmare. Superman has a nightmare. Or in other words, fear. That's where it comes to life. Basically anything 100%. that could bad... Any, any fear bad, you have, anything you're yeah. going, man, I hope that doesn't happen. It comes to life in the dark multiverse. Now, similar, right? Similar to a nightmare that you may have. You wake up, okay, nightmare's over, gone, done with. These universes are created and then shortly thereafter destroyed. Until Barbados goes, wait a minute, I can use this Batman. I can drag him into the dark multiverse. If I get him into the dark multiverse... He is the counterweight to me, which means that I then get to rise up into the light multiverse. The advantage of that is the regular multiverse or the light multiverse, it's not going anywhere. It is fixed, whereas the dark multiverse, as we just mentioned, is filled with universes that are constantly being created and destroyed. So you have all these characters that are having these relatively short lifespans dying and it's over. Barbados recognizes this and goes, I can use these creatures we can get ourselves out of this constantly crumbling universe and take over the the light multiverse. It's fascinating. And so he starts preparing Batman over the centuries by essentially coating his body in different metals that cross over between like the light I keep calling it the light multiverse. Is that even right? It's just the multiverse. Yeah. It's just the multiverse. I think it's. I think it's, it's just the multiverse. Keep, I think it's easier to keep up with, though. Yeah. Right. So I'm just going to keep doing it. I'm good with that. So that crossover between the light multiverse and the dark multiverse, and furthermore, it ties into Batman's battle with the Court of Owls, which Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo gloriously authored about ten years ago. So we'll get into that sometime in the old school Court of the Owls. realm fantastic it's fantastic so they tie back into that story and we realize that while batman was battling the court of owls the court of owls this whole time has been working for barbados to prepare batman for barbados's return because the court of owls is going this barbados guy he's got the right idea he wants to destroy everything tear it down build it up again we'll be partners we're in Colts, man. Colts. Dicks, man. <laughs> Avoid the cult. If, if if there's ever an opportunity to get in one, if, don't. Just if, get out. Just if there's ever a it. group that are like, hey, we have matching masks. Oh. You come in, I'll come in, we'll be like teammates. Yep. No, get get the hell out, man. Get the hell out. That's hundred percent a red flag. Matching masks, that, that's a cult every time. That's that's a dead giveaway. <laughs> are you in a cult? Are you wearing matching masks? <laughs> that's it. Get out. And so really super, really cool tie in to what Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo did with the Batman character in the New 52, and we will, by all means, dive into that. And just real quick segue, like this this is going to be me and us. We're going to branch off into all kinds of crap oh, yeah. off of this because it's glorious. So long story short, the bad guys succeed. They pull Batman into the dark multiverse. Barbados and his minions come out. But here's the thing about Barbados' minions. He has selected... The best of the best. Who are the best of the best? Batman's nightmares. Dark versions of Batman. So in other seven words, to be exact. Seven. Weird. Whoa, crazy. Huh. Interesting. So what would have happened, Riley, if Batman decided, you know, can't trust Superman. Gotta kill him. Ah, uh, doomsday virus is the yep, way to go. Inject it right into me. Turns himself into a, a doomsday, doomsday monster. Kills Superman. He's now on Earth. Yikes. That's fun. Yikes. What happens if a young Bruce Wayne, shortly after his parents were murdered, comes across a Green Lantern ring, is so overcome by grief that rather than using it for good, breaks the will of the ring. Which is insane. Which is nuts. And becomes a dark Green Lantern that is beyond OP. The Dawnbreaker, correct? Correct. Which is a good pull on your part. Yep. Dawnbreaker... Uh, what happens if Batman loses Alfred, is overcome by the grief that the loss of Alfred occurs, and he decides, hey, you know what? Cyborg could have helped me out. I'm going to essentially take down Cyborg, take him over, and use Cyborg to recreate a bunch of 
robot Alfreds that Cra- just kill everybody. <laughs> Crazy cyborg. Just kill everyone. Crazy cyborg. That happens. So a lot of really cool evil Batman. And where where is that one? That one's right here. This here we one? go. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, and then yeah. all the origins of the evil Batman right here. The best of the best. It's a shame they don't show all on the front, but I can yes. understand why because that's an amazing cover oh, too. It's so good. The best of the best. What, what would happen if the Batman essentially combined with the Joker? <laughs> well, I'll that's... tell you one thing. A lot of orphans got adopted <laughs> and then went crazy. And then, and then, yeah, Whoops. kill a lot of people for him. Batman finally snaps, kills the Joker. As soon as he kills the Joker, the Joker releases a toxin out of his blood that infects Batman and uh, Jokerizes him. Yep. And he just, he leans into it. He's like, you know what? Deal. I'm in. So you have all of the strengths of Batman, all the craziness and chaos of the Joker in one, and thus is born the unreal character. Arguably, probably one of the scariest Ooh. versions of Ooh. like a, a Batman. Just a, a Batman without morals? Yeah. The Batman who laughs. And here's what's Badass name really, too. really sweet about this character is that Sorry, about these characters is that when they're brought into, again, what we're going to continue to call the light multiverse, and the characters of the Justice League start interacting with them, like for the first time before they realize exactly what's going on, like these characters all have Bruce Wayne's voice, right? Like it's twisted a little bit, but when they initially have the first bits of dialogue, all the characters of the Justice League are going, Bruce, oh, all right, there you are. Oh, sorry, psych, Superman. It's Doomsday, the Devastator, another fantastic game. The names are just, they crush them. Uh, They crush these The Red Death. They crush these names. Fantastic. They're unbelievable. Uh, And so it's it's genuinely not like a a different, how how do I want to put this? It's not, it's not just this abstract, random, ah, here's just kind of a bad guy we threw together. It's genuinely a twisted version of Bruce Wayne that was never meant to exist that's been brought out of the nightmare verse into the light multiverse and unleashed. And if you thought Batman just on his own was bad news, combine him with all of these either formerly good or formerly evil entities. And now, my goodness, do you have a horde to try and take down? So, great story. Really, really cool stuff. And I, I will say this my one gripe with it is the conclusion of the story I, I found a little underwhelming. Like it ended, and I went, that's it? Oh, rats, I thought we were going to keep going. <laughs> okay. But it's so it's so good that you, I don't hold it against it. Yeah. It just, it had to end at some point, and I don't feel like they, I feel like, okay, we're going to watch the Summer Olympics in a short while. Right here in a couple months, they're yep. going to kick off. I feel like you're watching a fantastic performance by a gymnast you're like wow incredible stuff crushing it crushing it they go for the landing like the floor routine right yep. where there's doing unreal flips incredibly acrobatic moves they go for the landing it's like a little shaky oh, but it was still great still great i'm in yeah 10 10 right here <laughs> uh one of the coolest stories i've ever read it's a it's unbelievable like the concepts are just filthy so my question to you is hit me favorite dark version of batman If you don't want to pick a favorite, you can do top three. Yep. Um, the Devastator is so cool. The freaking Doomsday version of Batman is so... Oh, my gosh. It's so, so cool. Hard not to pick, like, the Batman who laughs. Like, I don't enjoy that at all. Like, reading that origin story... <laughs> oh, it's, oh. It's, it's messed up. Oh. You, you're like no, oh, because he's not doing it because c- he wants to. Oh, originally, yeah, it's it's nasty, um, but he, he, it's such a good character. So Devastator Batman, Batman who laughs. And then a third, I'm gonna go with maybe maybe the Death Machine, the side oh, Batman. Okay. That, that, that's what I would say. But it's a, that's a soft that's a soft number three. I, I'm, I feel really firm on the top two, the third. There, there could be a rotating door there, depending on how I'm feeling on a given day. You? I, for me, I know my top three. Dawnbreaker. Yep. 
is up there. Yep. Um, Red Death is up there because mm-hmm. that's such a badass suit, and that whole that whole story is awesome. Yes. And then you gotta have Batman who laughs. I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think after this story, it gets a little overused. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think they milk him for all he's worth. <laughs> but mm-hmm. fantastic nonetheless. Yeah, yeah. Heck of a. I, I gotta give Scott Snyder a lot of credit. That is a that is a heck of a notion to have an idea that is on the one hand so abstract, so different, so unique, and yet simultaneously really tangible. Like when he's describing what the dark multiverse is, like it's really it's actually easy to understand. It's like, oh, it's it's where nightmares it's where nightmares show up. And then of course they disappear. But what if your nightmares didn't disappear and said they come into the real world? Yep. Oh, okay. It's wild, right? Like the multiverse in and of itself, that's always been such a a fertile ground of creativity for so many authors over the years. And he just went and said, how about we have a brand new multiverse? Let's have a dark multiverse, y'all. And he just gets into it. And so eventually we're going to get into this, like Dark Knight's death metal, because this is just a direct, hey, we're going to branch off and go further down the rabbit hole of Dark Knight's metal. And it's awesome. It's really good. I do need to read the tie-ins to this because we'll come back to my little beef here with, okay, all the tie-ins you have to read. This main event is quite a bit thicker than the Dark Knight's Metal main event, so I think there's less that's Mm -hmm. not in here, but I still need to read some other things to kind of flesh it out. Oh, so you can go read their other comics. Dude. That's exactly why they do it. The cover sells me. It's Wonder Woman with a chainsaw. I did not realize it was a chainsaw. <laughs> Is there a lightning around it too? Yes. Yes. She gets a lightning Wonder chainsaw. Wonder Woman with a chainsaw, Batman with a Sith, and I'm sorry, is is that I'm sorry, I said Sith Scythe. I was I was gonna like Thank see you. if you picked that up Thank or you. not. I got there. I got there, it just took a while. And then freaking Superman with an oh what's that? Dark side apocalypse arm? Okay. And, and brass knuckles, dude. Yep, okay. He's got brass knuckles. Deal. <laughs> Deal. And so the Batman who laughs plays a huge role yeah. in this story. Um, it it's nuts. We're gonna get into that um, in another in another episode. But I can't recommend this story enough. Like you definitely need to pick up the main right, the main line, and then at the very least the Dark Knights Rising, so that you can read the origins of all of the Dark Batman. I mean, it's man, that's incredible. Like those stories of the origins of the Dark Batman are are worth it even if you don't read the main storyline. Like, that's how good that is. But then I'd also say, hey, pick up The Resistance. There's some really cool storylines in there as well. But what a fantastic story. What a lot of cool concepts. The art, like, the design of these characters is insane. And the design gets even better yeah, in the, Dark Knight's Death Metal. You know what the best part is oh. about this? The best part about this is it still has that fresh new comic smell yes, in it. it and it just You just soak it in. Oh, my gosh. Soak it's it fantastic. In. Yeah. So I, I give I give Greg Capullo mad props. Like that guy from an artistic perspective, I loved everything he did with Batman. Loved what he did here with Scott Snyder in Dark Knight's Metal. He somehow go he, he makes it even better in Dark Knight's Death Metal. It's incredible. Like the designs of these characters are nuts. And I I can't give the guy more props. Like that freaking Oh, it's so good. And talk about two guys that worked together for a long time. Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo had like the whole new 52 Batman yep. run. Yep. And then I think they had these. Was, was this the last time they did Batman? Or was it that weird solo story they did too? They did that solo story. Yeah. With Joker uh, and uh, Joker's head in a box. Last Night on Earth. Yeah, that sounds right. Yep. I think that was the last one they did together. Yep. And that was supposed to be like their last, last and I'm glad that that wasn't it. I'm glad that they, because that one was fine. Like I've read it. Not not it. a note to end on though. No, no, and it's it it was fine. It was fine. Um, this this is what I was hoping that story was going to be. Yep. Because that story is kind of an else world. It's its own self contained. Uh, hey, this is one way that the Batman story could end, so mm-hmm. to speak. Um, but something that's really cool, right? Like Dark Knight's Metal is very much a Batman story. Obviously, the whole Justice League is involved. Superman and Wonder Woman have significant roles in the story. But something that we'll get into when we get into Death Metal 
is this is really a Wonder Woman story where Batman and Superman are more of the supporting characters. Which is so weird. And it's so good. Like, I'm definitely it's okay so with it, but it's yeah. weird. It is, because that you'd is not... you think it'd be Batman. Yeah, you'd think it'd be Batman, and it's not, and it's really effective. Oh, I totally, it's, I totally it's forgot. Really he, good. Gets the, he gets the one ring. Yeah, yeah. He's got a Black Lantern ring. It's, I forgot about it's that. Awesome. That was badass. The, oh, the visuals in this are so... Oh, I, I flipped through oh. it. Oh. They're so good. So damn good. Yep. I mean, because yep. the, there was only seven evil Batman in this one. There's like a thousand million of them in this one. Yeah. Yeah. No big deal. Here he is just using a black lantern ring. Yep. Well, what's that to bring oh. guys from the 1700s out yeah. of their graves? <laughs> cool. Cool. Blackbeard? Oh. All right. Teal. We got him. Let's go. <laughs> so you can't go wrong. And again, if you're looking for something to read... Find what Scott Snyder wrote. He's it, he's pretty well known for his stuff. He's had a one hell of a run over the last decade. His, so I want to say his new Fifty Two Batman um, started. In, it's one of the best Batman runs. It's fantastic. Arguably, arguably. it's fantastic. Did he and do? I think that started back in twenty eleven. Did he do Batman Eternal? Yes. We're gonna find out. Yes, he did. Right here. Capullo did not do the art. Scott Snyder, James Tinian. Yep. And Tinian's yep. doing the Batman run it right now, so mm. his stuff is really okay. good too. Yeah, yeah. So it incredible stuff. If you want, if you want an author that uh, consistently cranks out good stuff, Scott Snyder's it. He, he he's a little bit nuts. Like he's got a flair for the for the crazy, which is okay sometimes. But he uses it really well. Um, and I think I want to say he did a Swamp Thing run that I have not read. Um, but you can you can tell. Because Swamp Thing shows up a little bit in Dark Knight's Metal, he shows up a lot of it in Death Metal. I did notice that he's a yep. he's a primary player. Yeah, isn't he? yeah. And I'm trying to think of what oh, I feel like there was a third reference I was going to make with Swamp Thing and Scott Snyder. Where you can just kind of tell, like, no, he he likes that character. He yeah. just likes dropping him in there, like, which is okay because oh. some of those characters they need that yeah. little extra boost, right? I mean, we could go on for days about Martian Manhunter. Yeah, don't even get me started. On I know. That. Don't even get me started. I know. On that. So. Anyway, great stuff. Highly recommend. <laughs> We're going to get into death metal once I've had a chance to read the uh, the connective tissue, yep. if you will, because there's certainly parts of that story that I want to I want to flesh out. But I tell you what, like just straight up visuals, this set of stories, absurd. So creative. So cool. So well executed. Oh, love it. Absolutely love it. <laughs> there we go. And I... Guess we'll use that to tie into our final topic of Let's the night, Let's which do it. I'm just going to pull out my phone because uh, what we are talking about is the new Eternals trailer just dropped. Yes. And it is the most vague Marvel trailer I think I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. I don't know what I don't know what to expect from this movie at all. At all. How long was that trailer? Like, I mean, a standard and trailer, and a half, I think maybe. It was longer than that. No, was, was it, it was, 2 minutes? It was at least 2 minutes. Really? And I, I don't know if it's possible to know less than before the trailer. But that's what it felt like. Oh, for sure. It didn't feel like we learned anything more. And this, that's not a, that's not a criticism as far as a what the f are you doing, Marvel? Because they don't. Here's the deal. Marvel has money in the bank. Oh yeah. All yeah. they have to do is put their stamp on it and go. People are going to come, including myself. Like I'm going to go watch that movie in the theaters. And I have no idea who these characters are. I have no vested interest in them. I just know that they're in that Marvel Cinematic Universe that I adore. So I'm in. Let's see what they got. All right. And the cast. My goodness. The cast really is going to be phenomenal. We, the cast is insane. How do you get a cast like this in a comic book movie? Two of them are from Game of Thrones, too, so I'm super excited. There you go. I, I'm go. biased in that aspect. You're allowed to be. But Richard You're Madden and Kit Harrington, yep. Marvel getting their hands on both of those, phenomenal. And I'm just going to point this out. Kit Harrington is playing a knight again, which is fantastic, but he's going to be a little bit more crazy, I think, which is great. Okay. But more importantly, what I want to point out is I think that's going to lead straight into an Excalibur movie, and I'm hoping to God, because Henry Cavill is in talks to be a, a Marvel character. Oh, my. Have you heard this? No. He's in talks, and the rumors, there's two rumored characters. I feel so bittersweet why, about this. Why, why don't you guess the two characters he's rumored to play? 
Two characters. Moon Knight's already been cast. Yeah, he would not have been a good Moon Knight either, I don't think. Okay. And I just thought of another guy that just got cast in a movie, which we can talk about towards the end of this. But cause <laughs> hit, me, I, hit me with me. I, I have no okay. guesses. No guesses. For Henry or for the for other Henry. one that's bothering for Henry. me? Okay. So for Henry, it's either Captain Britain Damn it. or Hercules. Oh my gosh. I personally want Captain Britain. I think that'd be fantastic because then you can introduce Psylocke, which we get into the X-Men. Yeah. But... Yep. I would love to see I would love to see Captain Britain. But uh, I'm I'm going the other way with that. I'd love to see Hercules. Her. Here's the deal. Uh if you as a just as a person, let's just put it that way. <laughs> if you as a person don't appreciate the sheer like I ma- majesty of freaking Henry Cavill you have rocked to up for Superman. Like, you have to go Hercules. That guy looked absurd. You're keep, not supposed to look like that. Keep the hair on the chest, too. Absolutely. It. Yeah. He's got natural chest hair. <laughs> it is across just a chest of God. Like, <laughs> give, give that guy Hercules. It's, it's who he already is. It's who he already is. It would be fantastic oh. to see him and Chris Hemsworth Thor just bro out. Oh my gosh. That'd be awesome. Oh my gosh. I'm good with Give me that those roles. all day. That's why I want it, because of what you just said with Crims, uh, Crims, Chris Hemsworth and Henry Cavill as two cosmic Marvel beings. Deal. Okay. So oh. I think the best way to handle the Eternals. I because, hurt because I love Henry Cavill as Superman. This is upsetting, and yet I also okay. know that I very badly well, want him as Hercules. You, so do you want to be more upset? Okay. Just real quick, I'm going to get it out it. of the way, and then yeah. we'll go into the Eternals. Yeah. Uh, so Craven the Hunter is getting a movie. Oh, no. Did you hear who got cast as Craven the Hunter? No. Aaron Taylor Johnson, a.k.a. the man who played Quicksilver in the MCU. Really? I'm not a fan of that casting. No. Yeah, that, no. that was the cast. That oh. that was announced today. If you wanted to have fun Aaron Taylor with Johnson. that casting, you cast Hugh Jackman in that role. I don't even want Hugh for that. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. I want, I want, it like, would just be so funny. It's like, no, he's all for me. <laughs> Everybody just gets mad. Oh, people would, people would be so pissed. Oh, uh, no, but like, you could have done... <laughs> All right, so we found a way to make the casting worse than Aaron Taylor Johnson. You you want to know who would have been perfect for it, but it's way too late to do it. It's the guy who played Zorro the most recent. What's his name? I can't. I can see Antonio his Banderas. Face. Yes, I would have liked that as Craven the Hunter. I would have been okay with that. I would have also been okay with Jason Momoa because I saw a lot of fan casting for Momoa, and that was badass. Yeah, that that's a perfect cast, but he's he's Aquaman. Yeah. So. That's Can't why I was that. okay. I thought Henry was Cavill a... was Superman, but whatever. Apparently, this is where our dreams get broken. So, what yeah. the hell, man? What, whatever. So oh. yeah, just you. You get to settle with that. I think I. I was very. I was oh. very pissed. Not saying that he, he. You know what? He could come out there and he could rock that role, yes. and I could. And he could prove me wrong, which I hope he does. But then we're not getting Quicksilver back in the MCU, so yeah. for sure. Unless I mean, I can see them doing the. X the yep. that guy. Yep, Evan Peters. That's very possible. Yep, they might just say I'd like screw it, it and we'll that. do that. But I'm I'm gonna keep mulling over who I'd like to see as Craven the Hunter. I respect your Antonio Banderas choice. I'm gonna. It's too late for that. Yep. I think he would have been great though. It's too late for that. I want a, we need a Russian man because Craven is Russian. Sure. So I would have loved a Russian esque character. Sure. sure. Okay, so I. Well, I'm gonna go. That into was a heck of a rabbit trail. That yeah, was fantastic. Sorry about that. that was but, fantastic. Totally worth it. So totally I'm going it. to. I have the Marvel comic page pulled up. I'm. I have the list of characters. Right. So I'm just gonna click on the comic book character, and then we'll compare. Well, I'll let you know who the who's playing him. Great. And then we'll just go into their power sets because I think that's what everybody wants to know. Absolutely. So. Let's see here. I need. So for the fir- the main guy. One of the main guys is Icarus, which is played by Richard Madden, a.k.a. Rob Stark, King of the North. Mm. All right, I'll stop down that trail. <laughs> um, and all, then, all I can think of when I think of Icarus is the, the classic tale of the dude that makes the wings, flies too close to the sun, wings melt, falls to death. 
Yes. So he's going to be like one of the That's strongest ones. Okay. Um, let's see here. I just want... Okay, powers. Um, his body is augmented by cosmic energy. Sure. Total mental control over his entire molecular structure. That sounds badass. That sounds shape-shifty-ish. Yeah. Has a virtually... Is that what you get from that is shape-shifting? Something that, like that's that. How, that's what I hear. He's virtually immune to injury and can regenerate his entire body if need be. Also immune to disease, aging, and extreme temperatures. Only total molecular dispersal can kill an eternal. So that means you have to blow up entirely, Whoa. spread out, so you can't reform. <laughs> Which is insane. It would take a lot. Yeah. Uh, he can levitate at speeds up to 850 miles per hour. Um, sp- said to be the fastest flyer of all the Eternals. So all of them can fly, I guess. Um, that's, can- bullshit. that's bullshit. <laughs> that's ridiculous. <laughs> Wait, it gets can more... just all fly? Dude, dude. It gets, what is this? It gets more intense. Look at this. <laughs> he also possesses telepathy. Okay, well, is this just Icarus, or is this all of them? Uh, this is Icarus. He okay. also possesses okay. telepi- telepi- tele- telepathy. Thank you. You got it. Thank you. You got uh, it. Is able to cast low-level illusions and he can rearrange the molecules of other substances. Must be nice to do everything. Usually employs illusions they to just describe Jesus appearance. Christ. <laughs> like, that's, that's who this <laughs> is. That's just, this is not Icarus. This is Jesus <laughs> Christ in a, uh, in a Marvel's movie. That's who it is. In combat, wields cosmic energy to enhance physical strength of over does. 40 tons and durability you? and can release energy from his hands and eyes in the form of heat, light, or concussive force. Um, at maximum intensity, can vaporize solid matter. He can also he can also teleport, but doesn't like to. <laughs> he doesn't like teleporting. Oh, I'm sorry, doesn't like to. What, why not? Feels a little bit pretentious. And he can. I'm he, sorry, it's too much. If I teleport, you literally have no chance. Not nah, there's all the other stuff. Actually, you can take teleportation away. Unreal. And as the prime eternal, uh, his greater That's a cool phrase. I, I don't know yeah, if I like this guy, but his, he's it, called the prime eternal. That's his power great. is. Was at one time greater than all the other Eternals. Okay. He could also manifest what they call the Blue Flame, which is a unique energy required to reshape the physical forms of Eternals, humans, and more deviants into a Unimind, which is a psychic entity with the combined power of all those participating in its creation. And then good at hand to hand and wrestling. Oh, That's just what in case. Throws in. Just in case there, and he can we const- thought there was a gap. Like, and and he also can't, he can't dango. And also he can construct battleships. <laughs> they just threw that in there too. Now they're making stuff up. That's ridiculous. So, so he's a powerhouse. In case anybody's okay. wondering, it makes you wonder what the rest of them are. For some reason, that description just made me mad. It's like, what is going on? What so are we even doing here? The next character we'll get into is Angelina Jolie's character. Yep. Yep. Athena. Which I have no idea if she's good or bad. I don't know who the villain is in this movie. I don't think it's any of the Eternals. You don't think so? No. No. I think it's a yet to be revealed entity. I don't think it's uh I don't think it's any of the Eternals. And and here's the deal. Again, Marvel doesn't need to show us anything. Nope. That's great. Don't show us who the who the adversary is. That's fantastic. We don't need to know. That was one of the coolest things, a little segue here, about the, the Wonder Woman movie. We had no idea who the true, uh, the two ad- the true adversary words. Wow, hard. No idea who the true adversary was in that movie until Ares just showed up. It's like, oh, whoops, there he is. They never revealed any of that in the trailer. So, um, it did not give that. me a power set for her. There's nothing left. Jesus took all the cool powers, and now there's nothing left. He even took wrestling. Like, are you kidding? Yeah, he's like, yeah, I love how it said, yeah, he's good at human wrestling. <laughs> like, okay, there's other forms. Uh, and also, why? Like, who cares? He doesn't need to be. Oh, that's amazing. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna interject here Go and for say, because I'm still trying to find my this stuff. my favorite character is going to be Gilgamesh, hundred percent. Because first of our, first of all, first of our, first of our. <laughs> Words are just getting worse for me right now. Oh, buddy, join the group. First of all, like, what a fantastic name. Freaking Gilgamesh. 
can go by Gil, if you so choose. But the actor that plays Gilgamesh, look at this guy. Ma Dong Siok. Probably just butchered that. Also known as Don Lee. That's why, for people why like me. Start that? So, but, <laughs> thank you, Don. Uh, this dude has arms the size of tree trunks. He's huge. He's just he's just an absolute South Korean beefcake. And of course, he's given one of the one of the uniforms, as revealed in the trailer, where no sleeves, nor should there be for my guy Don, aka Gilgamesh. That guy, right off the bat, I can tell he's going to be a character that I'm going to enjoy. So I'm excited for my boy Gilgamesh. So it sounds like this chick's got the same kind of stuff he does. So maybe they all kind of have similar power sets. I was thinking that they would have like a little bit of a difference. I'm sure there's some differentiation. Well, I'll just hop into your boy Gilgamesh. Let's go. But we'll hop into that one next. My guy, you were so excited about it. I am. I don't want to disappoint you. I am. Nah, I, I can't be made not excited about okay. my boy Gil. I got a. I got a, I got a special Google him. Mm. <laughs> I got a special Google him. Mm-hmm. Gil Gamesh Marvel Wild. I popped up really fast. There you go. Okay. What do you got for me? Okay. First of all, that suit is sick. Um, Told you, Gilgamesh. That's where it's at. I don't want history. I want powers and abilities. Oh, so spread up, uh, speed, durability, agility, reflexes, flight, regenerative he- healing factor. Um, yeah, basically the same thing. It, it's looking like they all have similar stuff. It says sure. he's really good with weapons, though. So. Of course. So he's just gonna be like your probably your close combat fighter. He's gonna be fantastic. Guess. He's gonna be a joy to watch. Just an absolute joy. So, this is the other one I kind of wanted to get into. Yep. Let's see here. Kumal Nanjiani. Do you know who you know who that is, right? I do. Yeah. Um, let's see here. And he's playing Kingo. Dude, based on all the research that I did, our boy... I'm sorry, what's his character's name again? Kingo? Kingo. The, the guy Kumal's playing? Yes. Yes, Kingo. Kingo. Um, is living on Earth amongst us as a professional Bollywood dancer. <laughs> so so that moment in the trailer was accurate? Accurate. Oh, that's... Accurate. That's, that's fantastic. Fun. That's great. Dude, that's he, great. and also, by the way, that dude got... That actor got shredded for that role. Like, unnecessary. He's a comedian, and he has the body of a pro wrestler. It's insane. Just silly. Just silly. That'll be my second favorite character, right after Gilgamesh. Yeah, talk uh, to me about the Dark Knight. All right, so this is your other this is your other Game of Thrones guy. Right? Oh, Black Knight. Sorry, oh, Black Knight. Yeah, we can. Well, we'll get there. Right, in a Batman second. mode, saying Dark Knight. Oh, so he prefers to fight like a samurai. Gilgamesh? No, no, you're the Kingo. Kingo. Yep. Really? Yep. That's okay. Okay. That's what that is. First fight like a samurai. Right. All right. So the Black Knight. We want to get into the Black Knight. Let's hear it. Dude, I... Because is he... A, help me out here. Is he an Eternal, or is he more he's of not. a friend of the Eternals? He's actually been on and off Avenger. Really? Yeah, so... um, I don't know much about the Black Knight, so this is why we're Googling him. I know that there's been more than one person to take the mantle up. Okay. Um, Let's see here. That's not terribly uncommon in... In comics. Badass name, by the way, Dane Whitman. And if you look up the Dane Black Knight, Whitman. he's got some of the coolest looks in comics. So cool. But anyways, and he also has a flying horse. I know that too. Nice. So, I don't want history right now. I just want powers and stuff. See what we can affect. What do we got? Okay. Gifted scientist. That's not what I expected. So he's a nerd. He's okay. dead. Uh, Whitman started out as a scientist, though specializing in physics. He's proficient in a wide array of advanced sciences and technologies, including genetic, whatever. Okay. So, <laughs> I got bored. But Fair he's enough. smart. Um, smart guy. Expert swordsman. Uh, Gotta be if you're going to yourself some kind of a knight. Like, you can't just not be good with a sword. Apparently the best swordsman in combat. So, he's going to be fun to watch. Magic immunity. The sword that Whitman is using is immense to magical powers, granting him an immunity to magic. So, Doctor Strange coming at him, don't matter. Hmm. Which is cool. Skilled, okay. skilled martial artist, expert horseman, ma- magical knowledge, skilled tactician, and strategist. 
Uh, he possesses the strength of a normal human male who engages in intensive regular exercise. <laughs> so, he wears the Brazier of Truth, which is magical flame and Gary... I don't know what that is. I don't think you would tell people that. <laughs> yes, I wear the Brazier of Truth. Yeah, that's something that you're not truthful. Don't, don't be truthful, truthful about, about that. that. No, no. <laughs> Lie uh, about that one. Don't tell us what it is. He takes a lance. And this okay. is this is the main thing you, you need to know. The yep. ebony blade, I know I know this is a big deal. Okay. So uh he also owns a few replica okay, let me I'm just gonna click on that and the give you more in, blade. And give you more information about that. It's a good name for a sword, the ebony blade. Yep, it's a magical blade forged by Merlin and another guy from the Starstone Meteorite. So it's wow. forged from a meteor. Okay. It's enchanted to cut through any object to prevent the death of its wielder and to deflect any magic, but it also carried a curse that would slowly corrupt any user and cause a lust for violence and bloodshed and death. There's always that catch with those really cool swords. So basically, always. he's fighting with his humanity the whole time he's using the sword. Okay. And from what I was talking to with my buddy out there, Chance, um, it sounds like he's going to be trying to regain his family honor because okay, apparently the people before him did not do such a good I'm job. I'm fascinated to see where he lines up in this story because we have these too. cosmic super beings, Jesus beings, and then we drop Dane Whitman in their midst. Not sure how that's going to work. I just I want to see if it gives me a little bit like just just an interesting part of his backstory, because that's I know the ebony blade will be sick, and it'll be cool to see that magic side where it's freaking Merlin guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you gotta respect Merlin. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, who hasn't seen the Sword in the Stone cartoon and not appreciated Merlin's efforts? Yeah. So here it is. Dane Whitman inherited the uncle his uncle castle he was unaware that his uncle was the villainous black knight so the black knight before him was a bad guy whoops until finding notes and inventions eventually he became he came upon the blade passing its test uh he was explaining the history of the blade and his curse he took the we weapon decided to be a hero and uh he joins the masters of evil but with the intention to infiltrate and destroy them from within okay because that's what his uncle was an actual part of the Masters of Evil. So he's got an in yep. with the Masters of Evil. Just and then like Baron Zemo and kind others. Of, okay. Yeah. Okay. No, uh, I well, I thought Doom was in charge of it for a while too. Oh, there you go. Sure. Um, and then he helped out the Avengers. So there we go. Yeah. So pretty much, he's trying to avenge his. He's trying to get his family honor back. Yeah, so, so again, how the heck does he end up? In the Eternals. That's I don't know. Him. We'll see. Because we'll there's also rumors that he's going to show up in Ant-Man and the Wasp, the new one, because uh, they're going to connect it to like the quantum, I don't know, wow. the quantum realm. But apparently that's not happening, and I'm okay with that, because he's yep. alongside his brother from Game of Thrones again. So Boom. Boom. it'll be fun to watch them together. But there yes, I'm very excited about that, because yep. if we get a comic accurate Black Knight costume, I will lose it in a good way be fantastic just just for you i'm just going to show you some do it just his, hit me up. his costumes because they are phenomenal i'm trying to i'm trying to decide like what i want from this movie and i think today right subject to change as i mull it over more and eventually of course more more promotional material will come out um so we'll learn more about the movie before the movie but I think what I would like to see this movie accomplish is to lead us into another another avenue that hasn't been tapped into yet, just in the cosmic sense with Marvel, right? Like, let's go big. Um, as we've already established on previous episodes, I am psyched that freaking Gore the God Butcher is showing up yep. in the next Thor movie. I love that the Guardians are a part of that with Thor. We'll see how long um, they are in it. Yep. That will be the yep. curious part. Yep, they'll have a piece in that. But I, I like that that cosmic piece. Let's get into that more. And so I'm hoping that Eternals will take part in opening that up. Multiverse stuff, like with, with Doctor Strange and and Wanda and Spider-Man, 
I, I'm curious. I'm cautiously optimistic yep. about that. Multiverse I stuff can get kind of messy um, and not in a good way. It, it's hard to do multiverse stuff in such a way that it's genuinely rewarding and you don't just get to the end of the story and go, okay, what? Yeah. <laughs> what just happened? Uh, like, because for, for every uh, Dark Knight's Metal, there's a final crisis. And so... It's possible to do it well, it's just difficult. And so I am excited for this movie because I would love to see Marvel just open up more of that cosmic realm and just give us a whole nother set of heroes to root for and villains to root against. So th that's what I'm hoping for. I think the Eternals will do what they wanted the Inhumans to do. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, they originally planned Inhumans to be a movie. For some reason, they sidetracked it, and they're like, ah, oh, let's make it a show, and the show bombed. Because, originally, that's what the Inhumans could have been. Sure. They could have opened that up to yep. a whole new, like, yep. route for them. So, I think, eventually, they'll try it again and do it right. I'm not too worried about it, but I think... Yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Because, again, this is... We don't know where it's going to go. It could go anywhere. Really? Yeah, and, and I am. I, I'm. I'm just so intrigued by, by the cast. Yeah, um, cast like, is. Fun. They got some stars. Yeah, I, I, I'm not a. If you were to me, I don't. I don't go to movies because Angelina Jolie is in them. I don't go to movies yeah. because Selma Hayek Same. is in them. But those are two actresses that have. Like, they've paid their dues, and they're in, like, good standing, no matter how you want to look at it. Like, they're well-regarded. They, they're they free of, like, public controversy. Yeah. And so it, it's very, I would say, I would say different where you look back on, especially, like, the original Avengers cast, and um, all of those individuals had, I would say, outside of Robert Downey Jr., they weren't well-known. Yep. And Robert Downey Jr. had some baggage that he was bringing into into Iron Man. He's trying um, to redeem himself pretty exactly, much. On a personal level. And so I'm I'm intrigued by the presence of some of these actors and actresses in the sense that this, a comic book movie, it seems like there's some depth to this story. And frankly, the director that they brought on to direct this movie, like she just won the freaking Oscar for Best Director yep. for something totally, totally different. So she's got she's got chops. She's well established, and there hasn't been a a good history, I would say, with Marvel producing movies that well known directors and well known actors have gotten on board with. It seems like almost any time that a well known director has been attached to a Marvel project, they've kind of fallen off because Marvel. And this is again, this is not a bad thing, but Marvel from the high up producer level, our guy Kevin Feige has had such a clear vision of where they want to go, it's really, in a healthy way, limited what a creative personality, like most movie directors are, can do. And so this just seems like an outlier to that. Like, yeah. you have a director, like, she can make whatever she wants. She's won an Oscar. Um, none of these actors, actresses, or director needed to make this movie, Right. They didn't need this opportunity, so there. It seems like this is a very intentional. Hey, we're choosing to be a part of this, and so it it gives me probably more optimism than I should have for it, since I don't know anything about these characters. It's the same. It's it's legit. Phase four. Yep. This is phase four's Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm. It's kind of the same thing. James Gunn basically had free reign with a bu a bunch of characters, a group sure. of characters, and he did what he wanted. It was successful. And I think that's they gave her the reins because yep. again. They're like, okay, there is no weight on us. If we screw this up, right. no one gives a shit. And honestly, if it does bomb, which it won't, they can easily sweep the Eternals under the rug and be like, yeah, forget about them. Yep. Which, it, again, it won't happen probably. Yep. But Chloe Zhao is the name of the uh, name of the director. I wanted to get that right. I gotta I gotta start remembering that. But again, on top of your thing too. If you would have asked me five years ago if Angelina Jolie would be in an MCU movie, I would have laughed in your face. Because why would she be? Yeah, and well, what <laughs> what, what what role would she play? Right. Outside of this, I mean, fantastic, good for her. But yeah, it had to to get Angelina Jolie on this. It has to be something special. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll be curious with this movie as well how much of it is a just a standalone one-off and how many of these characters are going to endure... Split off. Yeah, endure um, in their own, you know, in, in films moving forward. Or Disney Plus shows. Um, yeah, I, I could see it going. I could see it going either way, and I again, I don't have expectations, so I don't think I have any hope for one or the other. Um, it Black would Knight. be it'd be a really different direction if the MCU just had this be a self contained movie because all their movies, all of them, yeah, have connections. Into, yeah. Yes, have led into something else very directly, and so I, I almost think. Just for the sake of something different, I almost want to see something where it's just a, it's just a one-off, dude. I want, but I'm I'm curious. I want a I'm Black Knight Disney Plus series after this, <laughs> so give that to me. Sure, give and us then, some sword play. Ah, yes, but uh, oh shoot, I got distracted by that thought. I'm not gonna lie, to you. I I thought of like shows as like, dude, Black Knight. It's just a mental implosion. Oh, like, I there's so much. I remember. I I think this show has the opportunity to dive into the history of the mcu as a whole yep like way before it even started and then yep. what i'm praying for and i think we're gonna get it i want to see the celestials okay i really want to see the celestials i think that would be a phenomenal way to put them in there so i believe the celestials are the forebears to the Eternals. so celestials came first they were like the creators, creators of the, the Eternals, universe. right if i remember yep. correctly i get on board with that I- i'd like to see I'd like to see that as well. See more of the history explained, unwrapped. That'd be worthwhile. I'd be I'd be down for that. And I'm a little curious to see what, if any, tie into Thanos they give. I know there's supposed to be a relation between at least one of the characters to Thanos. Uh, Angel- Angelina Jolie's character is supposed to be like first cousins or something. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm also not like... That kind of stuff can sometimes cheapen a character, right? So I don't yeah. want some kind of a connection to be made where it's like, yeah, that makes Thanos seem if, less cool. I think if they do it, they'll do it right. So I'm not yeah. worried in that sense. Yep. I'm more curious to see... It'll be interesting to see how they connect this and be like, okay, this is why they didn't help against Thanos. They didn't... Or they didn't care, you know? Right. Like, and because right. to me... What is a bigger threat than Thanos for them to interfere? Because that's where we're Taking at now. Taking out half of the life in the universe. It's Be- like, that, that, that would seem to qualify. And did any of them get even snapped during that? I mean, that that's the whole thing. They might be so powerful that the snap didn't even... Maybe they just shut that off. Maybe they started evaporating and they're like, no, 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 no. And then they would reboot themselves. <laughs> but, like, that's what I'm more most curious about, too, is like... You guys didn't get involved for shit. Mm-hmm. This dude right. snapped his fingers, wiped out half the universe, and that still didn't get you. So what threat in this movie is getting you out of the downstairs and coming upstairs and be like, okay, we have a problem. Here's my prediction with that. My prediction is that... Do I want to say all? No. Almost all of the Eternals got snapped. I think if there's a relation between one of them and Thanos, that Thanos, when he did the snap, intentionally targeted the Eternals. Okay. But guess who he left alive? His cousin? The Bollywood dancer. Oh. The... <laughs> because his moves were too great. <laughs> this guy is no threat. I'm sorry, this guy has Jesus powers. Uh, this person can do everything as well. This guy's named Gilgamesh. He must be fantastic. Bollywood dancer. You're fine. You're fine. You're not going to do anything to me. That's where I'm going with that. Yeah, I have... That's that's my hunch. And so, therefore, they come back after Iron Man snaps uh, everything. I'm sorry. Hulk snaps every living being that was snapped out of existence back into existence. That, that is my guess for what is the what the prompting is going to be. Because it did show that they knew what was going on. Yep. Because yep. they're like, oh, so since Cap and Iron Man are gone, who's going to lead the Avengers? Yep. And then they make that joke that it would be him, and then he laughed. Yeah. So <laughs> that's that's my guess, but we'll we'll see. I would love Richard Madden being one of the faces of Marvel going forward. That'd be fantastic for him. Might get your wish. I, I'd take him over Captain Marvel any day of the week. 
uh, if it was if it was Doctor Strange, yep. this Icarus dude, Spidey. Well, because originally I did want Black Panther to be part of that too, but I think with Chadwick gone, it's not yep. gonna happen. Yep. So if it's those three, perfect. Yep, I'm okay with that. I don't want. I don't need Captain Marvel being the lead. <laughs> I don't. I don't care. I don't want it. Yeah, she can go lead the A Force. I know you guys want to do that movie so bad, so just do that. I don't want her leading the Avengers. It's no gripe no against. No complaints here. I there's I just don't like Captain Marvel. She's not a, she's just not a great character with what they've done with her. She's just okay. So yeah. yeah, in end terms, we have no idea what's gonna go on. No, but looking forward to finding out late this year. So we got a while. Uh, while we got to wait yet. For sure, that's all right. But that's all right. Uh, and then Loki comes out in two weeks. So. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm. But it's gonna be fun, man. I think uh, I think that wraps it up for today. You bet. A lot of good content, a lot of good, a lot of good stuff to discuss, a lot of good comics, and looking forward to continuing to to delve into that just rich, yeah. rich realm. Um, give us your guys' thoughts on what could happen in Eternals. We're, Certainly, we want we want to hear from you. Um, email us at uh, what was what was our email again? That's that's what I gotta find right now is our email and plug that again. Do it, do it. Yeah, we'd love to hear if if there's comic runs in particular that you'd like us to to delve into. Clearly we've uh, clearly we've got the time to do it, and we enjoy diving into to comics runs. So if there's a run that you've wanted uh, wanted explained or explored or characters yep. or um, you know our thoughts on something, you bet. Let us know. Via movie wise or something. We're, We're happy open. to deliver. We're eager to please. Uh, well, maybe not eager, but we we would do it. Yeah, we, we would, we would it. consider it if there's a lot yeah, of we like would think about it. If it's something we want to do, yeah. <laughs> right. Uh but our email is jpnbeans at gmail dot com. Yeah. I will say that again. Jpnbeans at gmail dot com, all lowercase, all together. So That's all you need. Yeah. It's great. Hit us up. It's great. So um on that note, uh God bless. See you, folks.